Well, good evening, and we're glad you're here this evening with us to worship and just to be in the presence of the Lord. If you bow your heads, let's just open with a word of prayer and invite the presence as we we worship his name tonight. Lord, we thank you for this day. Again, Lord, we, we don't understand all the things that are going on, but Lord, we know one thing. And Lord, no matter where we're at or what we're going through, we can always come into your presence. And so, Lord, we just ask that you would bathe us now with your presence as we lift praise unto you. And we just love you this evening in your name. Amen. Let's worship.
for our prayer times and it's James 5.15 and I know I've quoted it in every service and I'm going to continue because I believe that it, it fits where we're at and, and what we're all going through. It says this, and the prayer of the faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise them up. You know, one of the things that we have to understand is there is physical sickness, but there is also spiritual sickness. And this scripture tells us that the Lord shall save the sick, the spiritual sick. And he shall raise up those that are, have infirmity in their body. And, 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 and we have this list of, of names that have come in and multiple things, physical. And, but I want you to also know that this last, this last Sunday, I, made the, I, I asked him, if you prayed that prayer with me, contact me. And I want you to know that their names are on here. There are people that contacted me this week. And I want you to know that what was spiritually sick is now spiritually whole. And so I want to just begin to, I want to begin to pray over these. Some of them are physical, some of them are spiritual, some of them are financial. But I want you to know that it is Jesus Christ that raises that up. He heals what is sick. He fixes what is broken. And so right now, if you have an infirmary, if you've got a situation, let's just lift it up to the Lord together. Pray with me, church, if you would. Lord, right now, we come before you, standing on your word that says, at the name of Jesus, all things are possible. Everything that's impossible for us is possible for you. And so, Lord, we begin to lift up Kelly and Nora, Thomas, Jim, Rich, Andre, Kathy, Kevin, Holly, Tom, Randy, Greg, Diane, Tim, Wes, Caesar, Ron, Sue, Lori, Donna, Piper, Corey, Jimmy, 
and, and James, two different ones. But I want you to know that, that Lord, that these are names, Lord, that, that these are not just names, but they are people. They are souls that you love, that you died on the cross for, that you took the stripes for. And so, Lord, right now, we just stand on your word that says, by your stripes, they are healed. Whether it's physical, whether it's spiritual, whether it's financial, Lord, they are healed in the name of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we know, we know how great you are. Lord, we know how great you are. We have seen the miracles happen in our very midst. We know those that had cancer that don't have cancer. We have, we know those that, that, that the doctor says that they have diabetes, but there's no symptoms. You are great. And Lord, we just love you this morning. We thank you for what you are doing in our midst. Well, though Satan means to tear us down, Lord, you are using it to build us up. And so, Lord, we love you this evening, and we stand on your word that we are healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said together, amen. Amen. Hey man, if that's you, I want you to know, I want you to begin to walk that. <clears throat> speak those things. The Bible says to speak those things that are not as though they are. So don't say, I have a sickness. Say, I have a healing. Don't, don't claim it. If you want it, you can have it. But if you don't want it, then don't say you want it. Say that you don't want it. If that all makes sense. If I'm talking, making sense here, but I think I am. That's what I want. That's what the scripture says. And that's what we're going to stand on. Amen. That's good. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, Carl. And thank you for those of you on Sunday that said, somebody get Pastor Todd some water. <clears throat> um, it doesn't always work, but uh, it's, uh, I appreciate the sentiment. Well, I, uh, it has been an interesting month, has it not? And uh, the things that are going on and, and, and you've got this group saying this and this group saying that and all this different things. But I think what we need to do as a church is we need to, we need to think about um, what the Bible tells us to do and how we should be living our life. And, and I'm going to veer away from the coronavirus, if that's okay with everybody. I'm tired of hearing it. I'm tired of saying it. I'm, I'm tired of dealing with it. So I'd rather go into the scriptural things. And, 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 I, and, and I will mention it because there's part of, there's some in my sermon. But, but, I, but I, want you to, I want you to begin to think about this. Are you the type of person who is willing to do whatever it takes to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, are we, are we, are, do we live our lives as individual Christians and, and do we have that, that mentality of I can do what, I'll do whatever it takes or, 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 or do we live our lives and, 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 and say, you know, I'm just going to do what I have to do or, or what I need to do. And, <clears throat> and if you look at, at, at what we have now and the life that we are living, it's unknown to us. We, every day is a new thing. Every day is something different. And, uh, and, and as I was thinking about that, and, and I'm going to get to my text, if you want to turn to it, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 22 and 23. But um, I've had several phone calls in the last several weeks, and, and um, I had one with a, a, a pastor friend of mine um, this last week, and, and, and he said this to me, and it, it really, it caught my, it caught my spirit, and, 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 it, and it hurt my spirit, it, it grieved my spirit, if I can use a... Uh, 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 a King James word. Uh, but <clears throat> this pastor said to me, he said, you know, I thought I was pastoring the best I could. And he said, but then when this COVID thing happened, my church and my ministry have almost died. And then he said this, he said, but I don't want to keep doing it the way I've been doing it. And he, after he said that, even the rest of our conversation, I, my, my spirit kept going back to that. And, <clears throat> and then I, I, I had someone send something to me and I searched all day trying to find it. I can't remember if it was Twitter or email or it was on, I can't remember, but it was a cartoon. And in this cartoon, it was, it was, it was Satan and Jesus and they were having a conversation. And the caption said, this is Satan speaking, and the caption said, look, I've closed down all of your churches. To which Jesus responded and he said, no, you just opened a door so I could open one in every home. I want you to begin to think about how we live our lives and the impact that our lives make. Because if we just do church and we just do, we just do our duty, then when something bad like this happens, what happens? Our ministry and our churches almost die. And so as I was, as I was pondering that and, 
Um, and thinking about it, and I couldn't get away for it, I began to ask myself this question, and I want you to ask because you're our congregation. This is your church. And so I want you to, to begin to think about it. Are, are we a church that is willing to do whatever it takes to see lost people come into a relationship with Jesus Christ? And then we need to make it a little more personal. For me, the question is, am I a pastor who is willing to do whatever it takes to win somebody into a relationship with Jesus Christ? And I want you to put yourself in that question. Are you a person? Do you live your life in a way that would cause someone to want to have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Now think about it. Do we, do we have that kind of mentality as a church? Will we do whatever it takes? Will we change the way, the, the, the way that we've always done things if that's what it takes? Will we give up our own personal preferences if that's what it's going to take? Will we break with tradition? I know I'm, 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 I'm butchering the, the, the sacred cow here. But, but will we break with tradition if that's what it takes to win someone to Jesus Christ? Amen. Will we be dissatisfied with the status quo? Will we, will we think strategically and creatively of, of how and what we can do to reach more lost people in our community and in the world with the message that Jesus loves them? Can we think outside of that box? Amen. Because we've got to do things a little bit different. I, I, want you, I want to use the world, if I can, as an example for the church. I know that it took some prodding, but I know that right now, General Motors Corporation is making ventilators, not cars. I know that there are, there, there are print shops that are not printing paper. They're not printing cards and, and all of that. They are printing masks for our first responders. They're doing whatever it takes to get the job done. And, and, and I want us to begin to think about that and have that mentality as, as, our, as a church, as, as our church, this church. Whatever it will take for us as individuals and for us as a church to develop that mindset. So now I want to go to the scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 22 and 23 says this. I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means, I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel that I may share in its blessings. Now, I want to take that apart a little bit because so often it is not correctly quoted and not correctly enforced, if I can even put it that way. But I, the question is, what did Paul mean when he said, I, must, I became all things to all people? Let me first tell you what it didn't mean, and then we'll go from there. The first thing, he did not compromise the message of the gospel in any way. He, did, he, he, did not, he didn't change the truth in, in any possible way in order to satisfy this group of people and then change his truth to the, this, kind of, this group of people. He was not a chameleon who changed his message or his methods in, in, in every different situation. He was not a compromiser um, who adjusted his message to please whatever audience he was speaking to. And, and, and so I want us to, to understand that... that He's not saying that I, have, I must become a sinner to win sinners. It's not what he's saying. I must become an alcoholic to win an alcoholic. It's not what he's saying. He said, I must become all things to all people. And, and so the first thing, you know me, I love to look things up. And so I want to look up the word all. What does the word all mean? Here's what Webster says. Being or representing the entire or total number, amount or quality, totality. Let me read it again. Being or representing the entire or total number. I'll, I'll add lib a little bit. And representing the entire amount. Representing the entire quality and the entire quantity in totality. Paul was saying that he would do whatever it took to bring someone to Christ. He would, he would, do what, he would get to whatever level necessary without compromising the gospel. He would compromise himself. And what does that mean? He would be willing to give up his rank. He would give up his position. He would put him in the lowly spot. Sometimes we think, well, I can't do that. And I've had that thought myself. Well, I, sir, I can't do that. I'm the pastor. There has to be a certain level of etiquette that I have to withhold because I'm the pastor. Paul is saying, that's not right. 
Paul is saying we need to not put ourselves up because, let's face it, church, I want you to understand this. Christianity is not about the Christian. Christianity is about Christ. And we have to understand that. We have, we have to, to wrap our minds around that. Paul was saying he was willing to do whatever it took. He would go wherever he needed to go. He would swim through, walk through, be in whatever he had to be in to win someone for Christ. So if we use the definition of all, and, and we can see in, in, in the life of Paul, he was totally willing and did live his life in that way. He did whatever it took to share the gospel with those who didn't have that relationship with Christ. <clears throat> the verse in there, it, it, he said, Paul said this, he said, he said, I, 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 let me read it to you so I don't get it wrong. I have become all things. And I want you to understand the verbiage in that. He said, I, I have become. And, and become is, uh, is, is, is a process. It, it, he, is, he is working through. And, and, and it indicates that, that it, there are times where it's going to take a little time to get where we need to get, to be who we need to be. To win someone for Christ. It wasn't immediate in every situation. Can it be? Absolutely. Was it every time? No. And, and, but I, but I want, to do, want you to see is that he didn't, he said, I became. Which means that when he became, the process came to a finish and there was an end. I became what I needed to become so that I could win this person for Christ. And, and, and I want us to see that in our life. You and I must become. That's the process. You and I must become all things. So what's that mean for us? We, 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 what do we become? <clears throat> it means that if we want to see more people come to know Christ, then we as, a, as, as Christians have to get out of our comfort zone. We have to get out of the place where, 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 where everything is just, well, you know what, I don't want to change anything because it's comfortable. Um, you know, I, I, I think it means that we can no longer be satisfied with how things are. Because no matter how good things are in Jesus Christ, they can be better. And, and, and sometimes we don't, we don't want to take that chance. It's, you know, it's like rolling the dice. It's not rolling the dice. Jesus said, I came to give you life and life abundantly. He didn't say sometimes. He said, I came to give you life and life abundantly. It's not a roll of the dice. It is our mindset that we will do whatever it takes. And when we do whatever, we, when we become those things and we, we do whatever it takes, then it takes us out of our comfort zone. It takes us out of our status quo. <clears throat> it means, you know, this means we've got to take a hard look at our lives to see what opportunities God has given us to use for him. So often we miss an opportunity because we're not looking for it. We're just tiptoeing through our tulips and we're not paying attention to what's going on. And God's bringing people across our path and we see them. We may see them every day. But those are the opportunities. And what is it that that person needs so that they can gain a relationship with Jesus Christ? Whatever that is, is what we're to become. Well, I must become all things. <clears throat> I have to ask God to show me new ways. And I know that I know I'm over 50 now and, and, and I, I know change. I don't like change myself much. And I don't, I, I like, you know, I like a plan, but this is telling me that, that I have got to ask God to show me new ways, things that I don't do naturally, things that I, that, that may not be something that I'm just naturally good at that take me out of my comfort zone. And I have to begin to ask God to, to how, do, how do I, how, what are new ways that I can reach individuals? And what are new ways that we as a church can reach out to the lost in our community? And, 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 and so often, you know, there's teachings about, you know, some people are supposed to be saved and some are not supposed to be saved. Let me read that verse to you again. It says, <clears throat> I must become all things to all people. Now, we looked at all, that's totality, it's everything, it's everybody. And so, so this verse is telling the church, you know, we, we have got to get to all people. I don't care, I, I don't care. I, I, shouldn't get into, I shouldn't get into all the different things, but I don't care color, I don't care race, I don't care, I don't care. I don't care what you wear, doesn't matter. All I care about is your eternity, where your soul is going to spend eternity. And that's what I have to become, whatever that is, to get you to that point. And so, so I was thinking, so, so why, why to all people? Why did Paul put it in there? And, and, and so I've got some scriptures I want to read to you. Because the first thing is, is it's to all people because that's our commission, church. 
That is what we are called to do. Matthew 28, 19 and 20 says this. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. There's that word again. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. It's our commission. God is, God is calling us to get out of our comfort zone. We've got to do whatever it takes to go into all nations. And, and, and the second reason is because God loves all people. We all know the verse, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved who? The world. The, world, the everyone. And, and, and it, it, it's part of it. We must become all things to all people. And the third thing I found is in this in this verse is that um, we have to understand is that Jesus died for all people, and that's hard for some of us to wrap our head, minds around because there are people in this world that we think that are not deserving of anything from God. Do we not? I mean, maybe I'm being too transparent here, but we think that. But Jesus died for all people. Romans five eight says, "But God demonstrates His love towards us in that while we were yet sinners." Christ died for us. Church, we have got to, we have got to change how we look and think of things. There are another, <clears throat> we have to understand that all people are sinners. You were born a sinner. There was a point in time in your life you were a sinner. So all people, Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned. I don't know if there's, a, there's not a comma in my thing here, but there could be for all have sinned. Let you think about it a second. And fallen short of the, short of the glory of God. What does that mean? We are all sinners, and, and, and we have to understand that, that just because we weren't a mass murderer doesn't mean that our sin is any less than a mass murderer, because sin in the Bible is sin. There is no degrees. It's, it's not like, oh, well, he's a worse sinner than me. No, you're both sinners, and, and, and we have to understand that, and we have to understand that, the, 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 that we have to become all things, because if we don't become all things to all people so that they have a relationship with Jesus Christ, then Romans 6.23 comes in, and that's not a good one. It says, for the wages of sin is death. And that you read that out, that's talking about spiritual death. That's talking about being cast into the lake of fire with Satan and his, and his demons. That is eternal punishment. That's what that's talking about. But then it goes on to say, but the gift of God is eternal life with Christ Jesus. Church, we have got to become all things to all people. That means that every person that I see today, every person I see tomorrow, every, every day next week, and for the rest of my life, that, that, that is a person that God loves, and that is a person that Jesus died for, and I've got to do whatever it takes for me to win them into a relationship with Jesus Christ. We've got to think that way. We've got to begin. God has given us a perfect storm. We're in a perfect storm right now. There are more of you watching me right now. Some of you are watching me now, and you've never seen me before, the, the coronavirus. Why? Because there's a problem. And, we, and now, you know, all of a sudden, we can see it. You don't, have, you don't have to be a preacher to see it. There's a problem going on in our world. And, <clears throat> and, and, and we, we have got to begin to do things differently. We're doing things differently. This is something different. It's hard for me to preach to empty chairs. I'm getting more used to it, but it's hard. You know, it's something different. And, and, and we have got to begin to think and begin to move and be creative and be cutting edge in, in how we pray and how we envision new ways to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> We've got to think of new ways to do evangelism. We, we, the, do the old ways work? Yes. Do we have to have new ways? Yes. There's got to be new ways. We have to have new events for our community. As a church, we do a lot of events. We just did one this last weekend. We, we do a lot of events, but we've got to begin to think, okay, what event can I do that's going to cause someone to go, why are you doing this for me? Because what we do for them, that's how they see Jesus Christ in us. We've got, to, we've, got to, we, we've got to look and find new places to do missions, to do ministries. We've got to, we've got to take new missions trips, and we've got to do new projects. This one's, you're gonna, I wrote these down. You're going to love this one. We may have to even try new styles of worship. Amen. Because not everybody likes music like you like. And most everybody doesn't like music like I like. You know, in heaven, there's only going to be two types of music. Country and western. But, I don't, you know, some people don't like that. <clears throat> you can stop laughing now. 
Seriously, church, are we willing to become all things to all people? Are we serious about using all possible means? That's the new international version. Using all possible means. You know, we lose sight. I said it earlier. We lose sight that as Christians, it, us being Christians, it's not about us. It's about Christ. Our worship is not about our favorite style or our favorite songs. It's about Jesus Christ. The, 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 our Tuesday night prayer meeting, as great as it is, it, it's not about us. It's not about how great we pray. It is about what Jesus Christ is doing. It's about him. The ministries of our church, we've got varied ministries, food banks and pregnancy centers. We've got stuff going all over the place, but that is not about, can't be about us. It's got to be about Christ. And when we do it, it's got to draw people to Christ. Amen. I, as I was thinking about it, you know, the, and, and, and I've been working towards, and, and, and please know that the vision that I shared with you several weeks ago, we're, we're moving forward in that. And, and you'll, you'll begin to see it and, and all that. I'm not going not gonna to share the surprise. I want it to be a surprise. But, but, I, but, but I want you to understand that that whole vision that God gave me, it's not about us. It's about him. Our tithes and our offerings are not about us. And it's not about the government and the tax write-off. It is about Christ. Amen. The fact that everything we do needs to be about Christ. We should use all possible means to share the gospel with the lost and, and to seek them and, and to, to go after them. You know, the, the, the verse that we have up here, we're, we're, to, we're to pursue and overtake and recover. That, that's what we're called to. <clears throat> Our worship is a testimony to, to, to him. If a lot, let, me, let me ask this. If a lost person was watching you worship, would they see how deep a relationship you have with Jesus Christ. Or would they just see you singing a song? It's how we think. It's a mindset. It, the, 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 the things that we do, <clears throat> the things that, uh, for our, our children and our youth and, and you know, singles and, and, and all of our, our different ministries that are going on, are we, use <coughs> excuse me, are we using all possible means? All possible means to reach the lost. And to reach all people that are living in our community. You see, there's a reason. There has to be a reason. We don't just do something to do something. Everything we do has a reason. You say, Pastor, that's, that can't be true. I breathe naturally. Yes, you do, but you breathe for a reason. So you can be alive. Does that make sense? Some of you are going, really? Yes, really. You have to breathe to be alive. There are th the things that we do. There's a reason for everything we do. And, and Paul put it at the very end. The reason we do everything we can possibly do is for the sake of the gospel. For the sake of the gospel. Paul's life centered in, 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 it was centered in living out the gospel. He did whatever he went. I mean, look at some of the places he, he was and some of the stuff he experienced. And, you know, they put him between two sweaty Guards. I mean, he, the man endured a lot, but he never complained about it because he was doing all he can to win those that are around him. So this evening, my question to you, church, is, 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 is can you, let me start with me, can I say that about my life? Am I doing all things possible to win someone for Jesus Christ? And as a church, are we doing all things possible to win someone to Jesus Christ? It's not about building this church. You know that. We don't even count how many people are here. On a Sunday morning, right now it's pretty simple. But normally on a Sunday morning, we don't even count. Because it's not about the numbers. It's about Christ. And it's about people having a relationship. Most ministry doesn't happen in the church. Ministry happens outside the church. And that's what Paul is telling us. We have to get out make, and become what people need. So that they can see and feel and hear and be loved by Jesus Christ. And so in this pandemic, and you know I hate that word. In this pandemic... What are we doing? Or are we doing all that we can possibly do? Now, I know some of you, you, you're, you are supposed to be in your home. And as your pastor, I'm telling you, if you have a compromised immune system, if you have it, stay home. I don't want you to die. I want you to stay home. And if you stay home and you need something, then you call me and I will make one of my staff go do whatever you need happen to happen in your life. We will get it to you. Now, I'm, not, I'm not saying that, but... Even think about how you pray. 
Because sometimes we pray out of duty. We pray because that's kind of what we've heard other people pray. I think we need to begin to become all things and all people in how we pray. Because the prayer is what changes things. Prayer changes things. What, it's, it's the spiritual taking over the natural. And so, so church, I, I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you. Let's change. Let's change what, 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 what we think. Let's do and become all that we can become. Do all that we can to win someone for Jesus Christ. Amen. Will you do it this evening? Pray with me as I close. Lord, right now, I thank you for, for your body. And Lord, the opportunity, Lord, as I, I shared that cartoon, it's how we look at the opportunity as to what happens. And Lord, Satan hasn't closed down a church. He's opened up millions. And so, Lord, we, we, we want to think outside that box. And so, Lord, help us as, as we become all things to all people. And that we use all possible means to win them for you. Lord, give us that Give us that, 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 that vision. Give us that thought. Give us that divine direction. And we will love you and follow you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Church, we love you. If you need us, call us. We're here.